What's up model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today I'm going to open up and show you what's inside the Monogram 1978 Corvette Indy Pace Car Model Kit. And if you stick to the end of this video, I will show you a great model car tip that will make your models look magnificent. Now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The 1978 Corvette was the first ever Corvette to pace the Indianapolis 500. In celebration of this occasion, Chevrolet took its 1978 Silver Anniversary Commemorative Edition Corvette and produced 6,502 limited edition pace car replicas for the general public. Monogram's 1978 Corvette Indy Pace Car is a 124 scale model kit with the Skill Level 3 rating. On this side of the box we see our model kit features which include a removable clear roof panels, detailed 350 cubic inch engine, and authentic Indy 500 pace car decals. There's the side of our car from the front three quarter and the rear three quarters. And on this side of the box we get a wonderful view of the interior as well as a 350 Chevy Corvette motor. Now as we remove the lid we actually see inside and there's our instruction sheet right away. Now there is one slight problem with this model kit. This is actually one I got second hand, so I am missing the decal sheet. However, here's our clear glass components. I did start to work a little bit on the body, but there it all is with the hood. There's our chassis, and then we've got a lot of our white sprue parts trees, as well as the chrome components and our rubber tires. Our instruction sheets for the Monogram 78 Corvette are quite large as you can see. You get this nice side view picture of the car as well as a history of the pace car itself and then all the information we need to put our parts together as well as this nice paint chart down here. The box top does say that this is a skill level 3 kit but I would really give it a skill level 2 rating actually. Here we have our Corvette motor, the left and right hand side block with the front timing chain cover molded in place, as well as our manual transmission out the back. There's our cylinder heads, valve covers, the Siamese exhaust manifolds, as well as the alternator and our fan belt and pulley assembly. And then we've got our intake manifold with the distributor molded in place, and then we have our distributor shield up here. The entire engine assembly then snaps in very smartly into our chassis. Our front wheel assembly is quite simplistic as you have the outer wheel, the tire and the wheel back which all sandwich in together and then they glue onto this one piece front suspension which then drops onto our chassis. Our rear suspension is also very basic. You have the upper suspension component as well as the one piece differential with the supports. Then our wheels go onto the end and that drops into the rear of the chassis and then it's all tied together with the drive shaft. After the rear suspension is in place, then the catalytic converter and exhaust pipes glue onto the back end of the exhaust pipes with the muffler, and all of that drops in onto the chassis covering the differential. Here we have our firewall, and the Chrome Master Cylinder gets glued into place. The windshield wiper mechanism is painted aluminum, and then this drops into place onto the chassis just behind our engine. Next up we have the radiator assembly and we've got this nice radiator here with the radiator shroud that glues on. This then drops into our front fenders in this notch and then we can attach our upper radiator hose to our radiator and then drop on our air cleaner and air filter. Assembly 6 shows our interior being glued together. This comes in with the basic tub assembly. But the nice part is you do get these wonderful armrests that glue into place, as well as these two-piece bucket seats, a front and a back. You get a steering column with a steering wheel and then your dashboard, and all the rest is decals. Step 7 is our body assembly, and this is quite straightforward. The interior bucket tub that's all complete now drops into place inside our body. And then we have our underside hood as well which will just pop into place and those little pins fit into little grooves under the body. Assembly 8 shows our chassis complete that just pops in onto our body from underneath and then you add on these nice chrome side moldings. 
Step 9 shows our window assembly being glued into place, and this is a little bit more unique than some of the other model cars, because instead of gluing the glass from the bottom up, you glue it from the top downward, which can be a little more tricky and complicated. However, here we have our front mirror being glued in on the back of the clear windshield, and then it shows our door handles being painted aluminum, as well as the window frame. Step 10 focuses on our body detail parts. Here we see the emblem gets painted aluminum, and then our front nose piece glues on, and the spoiler glues up underneath. Out back we have the rear spoiler being glued down, and then our rear tail light panel, as well as all the different tail lamps and backup signal lights going in from the outside inward. Step 11 shows our T-tops being put into place. Now these just sit on the top so that you can always take them off later, which really helps you if you need to dust your interior in future years. There's our two rear view mirror housings and the mirror lenses which glue inside. Our final panel shows our completed model with the decal placement. Now unfortunately I do not have the decals for this kit because it was a second hand model, but I can always build it as a stock 1978 Corvette. Here we have our Corvette body, our hood, and our front air dam. I've also glued on the mirror housings, the rear spoiler, the rear panel, and the front panel, just because I was working on this previously. So as you can see, the body is really nice. Good representation of this vintage of Corvette. There's a sugar scoop up the side, and then we've got our back end with the Corvette emblem across there. You can see the fit and finish is quite nice on here, once you get the parts glued on. And then there's our front nose as well. I did sand the body a bit just to get this all ready for painting, but that's a good thing. Here's our hood, and underneath you do get a bit of that texture. Actually, it's quite smooth. I have removed the mold marks underneath here. How you uh, assemble the hood is you just basically turn it up into position, and then it'll go in place. Note the nice fit and finish on there. There is sort of a bit of a gap around just that front section. That's so that the uh, hinge could be molded into place and operational. And then our front little chin spoiler will glue up underneath here, just like that, and get perfectly into shape for the car. So again, very nicely done by Monogram. Here is our chassis for the Corvette, and as you can see, we have the inner fender aprons molded in place. And there are some mold marks up underneath here, which you would have to take care of. Now as we flip this over, you've got the nice spare tire holder back here, as well as all the details that make up the Corvette. This again is a little bit soft. It is a monogram kit, so there are some details lacking. You can see the stamp in here, which says monogram models for 1978. So again, this is authentic back to that vintage, and works up to be a very nice Corvette model once completed. Our next parts tree includes the engine block halves, the firewall, our dashboard, and the front suspension. It also included items like the hood and the spoiler and that, but I've already taken them off and applied them to our body. There you can see the nice engine detail. Again, this is a monogram kit, so it was designed to go together quite easily, but is lacking in some of the detail aspects. It will look good on the shelf, however. There's our dashboard, and as you can see, we've got both of the Corvette instrument panels, as well as all the other little bits. There's our radio down below, and our glove box. Front suspension is one piece. It does have the button ends, so make sure that all of this is cleaned up, so that your wheels will rotate and not accidentally get locked into position. This parts tree includes our interior tub, our rear differential, our drive shaft, our two bucket seats, the fan shroud, the wheel backs, the fan, and the pulleys. And again, very simplistic, but very nice. Let's just take a look at the interior. You can see the door panels molded into the side, as well as the little cargo containers back here, and our back area for more cargo. There's the center console, as well as the gear stick lever and... Well, the lever's not there, but the boot is there. There's our differential. As you can see, again, simple one-piece construction. Very nicely done. Soft detail on here again. The seats are really good. Look accurate. So, there's our parts from Monogram. 
This part street contains our distributor shroud, as well as our exhaust pipes and the catalytic converter and mufflers. There's the upper radiator hose, cylinder heads, our intake manifold, the Siamese style exhausts, then our steering column, as well as our armrests, the seat backs, and our radiator, and the upper part of our rear axle, which includes the spring. Again, the detail is quite nice on here. The radiator looks good, very soft again, uh, not quite the skill level 3 kit that you expected on the box. Maybe the skill level 3 part is referring to all the decals that you would put on. Here we have our chrome parts tree and we've got our side rocker chrome as well as the valve covers. There's our air cleaner and those wonderful Corvette wheels. Then we have our alternator, there's the rear view mirror, our chrome plated steering wheel the side mirrors, the shifters and parking brake, as well as our brake master cylinder. So taking a look at these, we have the nice slots that are opened up on those mag wheels. Again, the detail on this is really excellent and probably one of the better of the simple monogram chrome parts trees. The glass components on this model kit are really nice. There is our front windshield and the rear glass. You will have to remove these little bumps that are on there. And then here's our glass for the roof, as well as our rear tail lamps. Unfortunately, there are no red tail lamps in here, so you will have to use a product like Tamiya Clear Red in order to make that all happen. The tires for this model kit are Goodyear GT radials, and they are very nicely done. However, they are on this parts tree, so you will have to clip them off and clip off these tabs on the other side. And then there is a really scary looking seam line running up the center of that tire, which you can easily remove by using your tire spinning tool and some sandpaper just to clear it up. The tread pattern is quite nice, and the Goodyear lettering is accurate to the actual tire, as depicted on the front of the box. Here we have a completed build of our 1978 Corvette, and as you can see, it does go together quite nice and will look wonderful on your display shelf. I did not use the Indy Pace Car spoilers on this, but it does look good for the stock variation of the 1978 Corvette. Painted this white with a red interior, much like the original 1953 issue Corvette. Again, a very beautiful kit by Monogram. I hope you found this video very helpful for your next model car purchase. Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.